Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash We're looking at the sun in 131 angstroms. It's a 48-hour SDO video here. We see a large plage. No, not that kind of plage. We see a large plage in the northern hemisphere region. Zero sunspots. And a whole bunch of activity in the past couple days. Let's get to it. By the way, we've changed what we're showing you here on Helio Viewer nowadays. And we've included the Lasco C3 and the C2 as the sun ramps up in activity. So we can show you more comprehensive views. And we've got one of those today. First, we're going to look at the fields real quick at the beginning of the video to see no particularly organized regions. Except for this one right here. Here's a 304 angstroms view. Not a lot of filamentary activity going on on the limbs right now. There still is some plasma that could eject. Here's a composite view with 171 angstroms, the Lasco C3 and the Lasco C2. So no ejector really coming out there over the past 24 days. No significant coronal mass ejections for once. Here's a closer zoom in of that same region. And next we're going to look at the Southern Hemisphere in 171 angstroms. Let's make it full size. There we go. Not a lot going on in the South right now. The main activity is in the North, and there is the North. And there is potential for lots more coronal mass ejecta to spew out. Although the main coronal plume is actually on the opposite side of the Earth, there is one sort of facing Earth as well, kind of off to the south. 10.7 centimeter radio flux still at 70 solar flux units. And there we've brought up a, about a three and a half year chart of the radio flux. And uh, we haven't seen a smooth monthly value over 70 for a long, long time. KP index currently at 3. And there is still a chance for a geomagnetic storm and unrest over the next two days. So don't be surprised if you see this get back into geomagnetic unrest or even geomagnetic storm territory once again. I wouldn't expect it to get much higher than a KP of 5. And we've seen a few instances of geomagnetic storms. And we're currently in an electron storm, by the way. And you can see the GOES X-ray flux has come up a little bit here. It's We're almost seeing like a B-class background, but not really any significant solar flaring. Proton flux remains flatline. No real surprises there. Let's look at the real-time solar wind, which has a few pulses in the past 24 hours. You can see this pulse right here. And there's a pulse right here. You can see the plasma temperature came up, the speed came down, the density went up without significant shifts in the phi angle or the BTBZ. Anyway, current solar wind speed is at, having come off of its high over 600 kilometers per second yesterday, now down to 518 kilometers per second, which is still a significantly elevated solar wind speed. Solar wind density 7.1 protons per cubic centimeter. Next, your geospace magnetosphere movie. Looking at magnetohydrodynamic pressure. It's four hours of data courtesy University of Michigan. And we see multiple shells there on the bow shock region. You can see the plasmosphere is very small. And then there's a second charged up plasma sphere there. And we've got lots of electrons and a high speed solar wind. It's from a coronal hole wind stream, folks. Next, looking at ground magnetic perturbations. Four hours of data closer to home here. And we see significant pulses there south of Australia as the southern geomagnetic pole has crept into the Indian Ocean, and we've got two north poles during this polar excursion. 
We've got some power outages still in Louisiana, down from yesterday, still at 228,000 of the 2 million plus tracked customers. I wanted to bring up the geoelectric field real quick. This is an experimental model that's looking at induction in artificial conducting pathways such as power lines. And we'll be bringing this up in the future. The main sources, the main places that we see the most serious induction is along the East Coast Megalopolis and up in Minnesota. I just wanted to sort of introduce that today as this may become more and more relevant. Let's hope not. However, keep in mind, U.S. power systems are extremely sophisticated and they know when to shut off. It's part of this model. Next, the GOES magnetometer is very spiky, as we forecasted. Normally, you see more smooth lines like this. And we're not seeing that. It all has to do with the current sheet and coronal plasma. So let's give you an idea what I'm talking about here. First, let me check the life of the stream and see if we have any chatters. Are you a chatty, Kathy? If so, leave us a comment. Before we look at the sun, in terms of the gong too, let's take a look at the magnetic fields once again. And I love this model. This is the coronal magnetic field diagram here. It shows closed potential field force lines in black, coronal hole field force lines in purple, and did I say close? Oh, it shows open potential field force lines in black, closed potential field force lines in pink. You can see the north solar polar field there. And let's look at the Gong 2. So here's the Gong 2 data. And we may be snapping across into the south solar polar current sheet, which is shown here in red, although it looks like it's shrinking. Could be an indication that the solar polar field is weakening in the south. Perhaps there's some rising activity in the north. Not exactly sure, but don't be surprised to see us snap across. And the main portion of the Earth altitude current sheet right now is indeed green north pole polarity. And a strengthening of the north solar polar field is actually a good thing. Here is the line of sight field plot. And you can see some minor effects of that large plage in the northern hemisphere. Quite a bit of magnetic activity going on up there actually on the trailing portion. Something to keep an eye on throughout the day. Now today's Smash Lights is an exclusive on BitChute so far. We may upload it to YouTube later. We talked about COVID and how spooky and scary it is. <laughs> oh man, the thing is fragile. We talked about hypocrisy and lots of other things, so check that out. It's at bitshoot.com slash smashamash. Now we do typically live stream these videos to twitch.tv slash smashamash because the platform is so good and we are streaming there now thanks to our subscribers over there. If you enjoy the content on YouTube, press like and subscribe and press that notification bell on YouTube. Don't forget to check out our playlists as the previous Smash Light sections are typically always in the playlists. And we've got quite a few like nature videos, aquarium videos, daily space weather videos, riding, driving, and pro tips. And we've just finished the upload for today's Smash Light, which is titled Hypocrisy. Oh man, what happened? Now, BitChute experienced some problems a couple days ago. We hope they've got that all sorted out. And it doesn't seem to be taking my upload. Anyway, thanks to our subs over there at BitChute. We hope that gets all fixed up. If you haven't checked out smashamash.org, check it out. Smashamash.org. We've got links to our social media and so on there. Thanks to Smash Staff. Please give Smash Staff a raise by becoming a patron. Check out our affiliates. It's smashamash.com slash affiliate. And please turn off ad blockers. We're not tracking you or doing anything like that, but since these are ads, please visit the affiliate links on smashamash.com slash affiliate. If you're in the market for any of these products, please buy them through our links and support the channel that way. We greatly appreciate the support of everybody who has been checking out our links, shopping, and purchasing things via Amazon. And we don't endorse any products that we don't use, and there's more stuff coming to that list today. Smashamash.com slash affiliate. Also, check out the forum, smashamash.com slash forum. There is a cosmology set, set uh, for 
a cosmology forum there. There's also a extensive section over 30 pages long on COVID-19 coronavirus, which started on January 23rd. Check it out. On April 3rd, I discovered the definition of the word covid idiot. So again, check out our affiliate links. And we're going to do a small cosmology segment today. It's going to involve the cosmology of Earth. So here's an article on phys.org about basalt and the way that planets form and what's going on inside the core and the outer core and the mantle and so on. And since I don't believe that these things form through gravity alone, through the standard model of gravitational accretion, I think what's going on is a lot stranger than this. I think there's condensed matter inside the Earth. I don't believe that the solid core is made out of iron. Uh, I think that's a ridiculous idea. Uh, and I don't believe that heavy elements come out of the cores of supernova stars. So, anyway, an interesting article here about the chemical composition of the mantle. And basically, this refutes the mainstream science once again. Let's talk about Rush lyrics. It seems to me I could live my life a lot better than I think I am. I guess that's why they call me the working man. Now, I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to make these videos. And we like to cover various subjects here. Let's talk about an Extreme Tech article. Did you know that you can run Android apps on your Windows PC? Now, Android is a proprietary operating system owned by Google. And you must use their proprietary interface in order to use it. But you can get a thing called Android Studio, where you can emulate any version of Android, and you can run the devices on your PC. So if you want to do that, check out the Extreme Tech article. It's got the full Monty on that, as well as link to the installer from the Google site. So if you want to do things like develop apps and so on, do it on your PC. And if you like apps on your phone that you can't run on your PC, well, install that. How to run apps on your Windows PC. It's a good thing, folks. Now, of course, I'm not a fan of Google. Let's get to some real cosmology stuff. People searching for stellar eggs, yes. As it's not understood the way stars form, we've never seen a star form. And here's a, a bunch of possible, quote, star forming and, quote, regions in the Taurus cloud. So it's a great high-res image here. And are they stellar eggs? Are they newly formed stars? Well, they don't know. But an interesting article here gathered data from ALMA. And again, we've never seen a star form or actually die. Strangely, at the core of every supernoval remnant, there seems to be a star in there. What a surprise as we're not exactly sure the mechanisms behind these catastrophic events, how stars form, if stars form, how stars die, if stars die. So perhaps check this one out about the Taurus stellar dust cloud region. It's on SciTech Daily, and I believe it's also on most of your astronomy publications. Let's talk about a specific object one that's a little bit closer to home, 812 light years away. What is it? It's the Gaminga Pulsar. Now, the Gaminga Pulsar is very interesting in that, first of all, it's moving at 200 kilometers a second. Second of all, and that's the, that's the real motion, not the uh, apparent motion. It also has this crazy bow shock. So you can see it's got these two poloidal jets that come out. Those are undoubtedly its north and south pole. But you see how they're very curved. It also has this bow shock region, and it has a, a, a tail, which looks just like the Earth's magneto tail, really. So an interesting object, to say the least, is the Gaminga. If you want to read about it, there's a wiki article about it. It's located about 815 light years away, and it was originally believed that the Gaminga pulsar had something to do with the local bubble in which the sun is located. So that's some more interesting information for you there, folks. The Gaminga Pulsar. It's today's featured object. By the way, if you want to see its X-ray emissions, check out the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory. Just type in Control-F, type in Gaminga, 
it's entry 215, and there are the X-ray transient bursts. From Gaminga, you can see it's a very consistent X-ray source. Yes, the Gaminga Pulsar, one of the more interesting objects, and again, very close to the solar system. Thanks to our subscribe stars, by the way, and especially to our patrons, the true source of funding for the content. Here is your Patreon credit crawl, and if you notice, it's been it's gone out of order. Um, it's because this is organized by lifetime contribution. So, again, thanks to all of our patrons, and please consider becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash smashamash. We've got nine tiers there for your convenience, and we'll be dropping more things like audio files, ringtones, music, possibly custom graphics. Let us know what you'd like, and perhaps we can produce it for you as uh, I'm a sort of a full services digital studio. I began producing music back in the year 2000. Thanks once again to our patrons, the real source of funding, and check out our smash lights. It's at bitshoot.com slash smashamash. Again, we are in an electron storm here. We haven't seen this high electron levels since about a year ago here. So around Halloween of last year, October 28th or so was the last time we saw electron flux levels this high. And you can see we were actually uh, over 10 times the warning levels. Uh, I saw we reached, we were over 13,000 pulse flux units there. So the Van Allen belts are very highly charged up. And there's a lot of stuff going on up there in the magnetosphere. We've got some significant charging hazards here, uh, almost entirely in the southern hemisphere for satellites. And here's the total electron content forecast. This shows you the entire air column from the thermosphere down. It'll give you an idea of what GPS errors you could expect. And let's let that play through. So some significant GPS errors, especially around the equator at noon, as always. And uh, we're actually, we're seeing a, a forecast for even higher levels here. So you can see there the relativistic electron forecast, part of the Space Weather Prediction Center at NOAA.gov. Next, looking at the ionosphere, and it's looking a little wobbly here. This is a 24-hour view of the ionosphere. It's updated. Each second is one hour on this. And it's not looking too odd to me here. Here's the latest image, that one coming in at 8.15 universal time. Looking pretty normal there. Here's where stuff is. I think it's full moon. There's where things will be in a week on 09092020. By the way, 9 is my favorite number. Leave us a comment. Let us know what your favorite number is. I like to use in-the-sky.org for my scar, my, my scar charts. My scar charts. No, I don't show my scar charts. It could be considered pornographic. Anyway, I use in-the-sky for my star charts. And I face mine to the south because I'm currently facing south, and so is my couch. If you're up before dawn, you may see things like the moon and Mars and Venus, if you've got a view of the ecliptic. And if you want to draw it in, in-the-sky allows that. There you go. There's the ecliptic. Venus very close to the ecliptic. We saw some more earthquakes kick off here, hopefully aftershocks at Chile, including a six plus magnitude quake. Let's scroll up the list. It looks like a lull in earthquake activity, really, besides those repeated aftershocks at Chile. Now here's a deep quake at Argentina. Now this is a little bit northeast of where those Six plus magnitude quakes happened. And it was a 6.8 that we're seeing the aftershocks from here. Deep quake at the Fiji Islands, it's a 4.7 at over 500 kilometers depth. Here's a 6.5, probably an aftershock. Here's another deep quake at Oceania, that one near Tonga. And we had a quake come in as we do the show. South Sandwich Islands see a deep quake. I don't remember seeing a deep one there before. Also Vanuatu. So a bit of a deep quake event here, folks. 
Here's a small deep one in Alaska. Here's a deep quake in the Caribbean. Here's a deep quake in Argentina. Here's a deep quake in the Northern Mariana Islands. That one's over 550 kilometers depth, 4.7 magnitude. If that happened at the surface, that would be like a six magnitude quake. And moving on, deep quake event noted. Volcano discovery is our next link. I like to figure out which volcanoes are erupting. Currently, Mount Abiko is producing a 12,000 foot ash plume. Dakono, 7,000 foot ash plume as it explodes. Sangay exploding as well. Flight level 210, 21,000 feet. Revenador exploding. Flight level 140, 14,000 feet. Sabankaya, uptick at Sabankaya as it explodes. Sporadic puffs are enough to produce a 28,000 foot ash plume. Please don't pole vault the caldera. Here's a tidbit of what's going on in the tropics from Tropical Tidbits. Nana forms. Landfall in Belize, Guatemala, or Honduras expected late Wednesday or Thursday. Keep an eye on that if you're in the Caribbean. And when I say eye on, well, the pun is intentional. Here's a weather.gov map, and we still see massive flooding forecasted in the south central U.S. And whoa, look at that. Flash flood warnings all over California as well. Check it out. Next, looking at pressure maps here, we're going to advance this on windy.com via the GFS forecast. We'll pause it where the GFS forecast anticipates pressure to be tomorrow at noon, my time. And check it out. We've got a scary, spooky, triple low pressure system here forming a triangle. Please leave a comment if you think Frito-Lay is trying to take over the universe. By the way, Frito-Lay is the manufacturer of Doritos. Please allow me to switch tabs. Why, thank you. We see some terrestrial lightning striking here in central Texas. Hey, Austin, you may be in the crosshairs. There's a significant thunderstorm to your north. Hey, Waco, there's thunder rolling in. Next time you hear thunder, check out lightningmaps.org for your real-time lightning maps. Convince your foes that you're Thor or your friends that you're Odin or something. Next, here's the water vapor map. Shout out to our European and African viewers. Kurt Begemann, leave us a comment. Cyclist from South Africa. Here is the water vapor map for the Far East and Oceania, and we've set them both to four hours now for homogeneity. Here's a water vapor map for the Americas. There's that tropical system getting very close to Central America. Here's the U.S. Doppler radar map. And those storms are stagnating in Texas there. I believe there's some dry air in front of that. We'll show you in a minute. First, we're going to look at the cloud layer. There's what's going on in the cloud layer. We use a shortwave NASA interactive weather satellite. The shortwave radiation map will show you what's going on in the cloud layer at nighttime when it's too dark to see the visible. And here's the U.S. water vapor map. And we're going to zoom in on Texas once again here as those storms stagnate as they're butting up against a bunch of dry, massive air. Hopefully not too much damage associated with those, although they are a strong series of storms. And there's not a lot of place for them to go as this air down here and this air over here is much more massive than this air right here. So there's your low. And uh, it's an atmospheric pond, if you will. And let's just zoom in on this area over Tropical Storm Nana. To give any Central American viewers an idea of what's going on. And there's a lot of dry air in front of that also, which is going to slow it down and weaken its progression. I don't see any sort of counterclockwise rotation associated with that, and that's a good thing. Here's nullschool.net's jet streams. Let's look at the Western world first, since we were just there. And not any significant input at flight level 250, 25,000 feet of altitude. These are the winds 
at 25,000 feet that we use to monitor the jet stream. Here is the Eastern World's jet streams. Here are the Eastern World's jet streams. And hey, Smash Team, thanks for tuning in. Remember, share on your social media. As we are tanking over here, please consider becoming a patron or purchasing things via our links. We greatly appreciate it. And now it's time for me to shut up. Vanish, and thank you for flying American Smashways. Please keep your head and arms inside the Smash Plane at all times. We've got bonus features. How about a 304 Angstrom's 48-hour SDO video? The Intensity Gram, to most likely show you zero sunspots. Keep in mind the magnetic environment can change with absolutely no warning. We see one area of mag magnetic organization right there. And by the way, that does not look anything like a sunspot. The fields are not strong enough. Let's look anyway. And of course, we don't see any dark umbrae there. Here's a 304 Angstrom view, which shows a great filamentary eruption right at the beginning. Keep an eye on this area right here. When this repeats, wait for it. There it is. Big time filamentary eruption there. And that is actually one of the coronal mass ejections, I believe, one of the ones that would have missed to the east. If you're wondering which side of the sun is which, this is the east and this is the west. Why? It's because weather rises on this side and it sets on this side. Anyway, it's about that time. Thanks for tuning in. Stare at the sun, don't drink, and if you do, don't drive. And may that solar wind be at your back and that COVID-19 absent from your location.